All right, guys, I'm going to share with you a couple tips uh, that I use uh, when I try to solve this uh, some kind of bond, uh, problem. Uh, maybe you can find that useful for your, you know, your studies and maybe your 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 life too. Uh, okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so we have this value with a phase value of 1,000, a coupon rate. This is an annual coupon rate that 11.75%, and I forgot to mention that uh, this coupon is going to pay uh, semi-annual coupons so this is uh, every six months okay so I had I had I have this uh, uh, yellow cells in which I'm gonna make this uh, the calculations and here we're gonna be uh, finding the we're gonna please find the, the the formulas that I'm gonna be using okay so the issue date that's gonna be May 15 1000 uh, 1985 um, it's gonna mature in November 15, 2014. But we bought this coupon in 2005, and that's gonna be three the 23rd of January of 2005. So we're gonna be asked for the previous coupon, the next coupon, uh, since we're given uh, the price, which is 13, uh, 1,377 dollars, and the first call date and the call price it's 1053 that's a uh, pretty standard uh, information for a bond so let's start so the coupon payment that's gonna be well you know your face value times uh, your coupon rate divided by two that's pretty straightforward right now the previous coupon and here comes some of the tricks that I use I use a uh, cope cope P double P which is coupon previous that uh, cope cope p here now oh, here it is uh, okay so now it's asking for the settlement and we click on the settlement and the maturity date the frequency that's going to be two per year and the basis it's going to be actual to actual so that's number one in my case okay uh, i use that because i kind of like find very useful uh, you know to consider that each year it's uh, 365 and then four years later 366 days so this is going to uh, count the real number the real thing now for the next coupon the function is very similar but this time we're going to be typing cup n which stands for coupon next coupon i don't know what cd uh, stands for but uh, yeah well that's what it is okay so the settlement, the maturity, it's asking for the same stuff. Uh, this and then two. All right. You can see the formula over here. All right. Now, the accrued interest. For that, we just go ahead and double click on the cell and ACC and double click on accrued int. Accur in, acc int. <laughs> and then here is the trick. Okay. So for the issue. We're gonna be using the prefer the previous coupon because if we do use the actual issue date of this uh, bond, it's gonna uh, it's gonna provide the whole bunch a whole bunch of interest expenses that were paid from the beginning to the settlement date, and that's something that we don't want. We just want the accrued interest from the last coupon to the settlement date, which is. Uh, kind of like uh, the, the the amount of interest that the person the previous owner of this bond is entitled to okay now come on the first interest that's gonna coincide with the previous coupon rate and the settlement well that's pretty straightforward that's the settlement now for the rate we use the coupon rate in a yearly basis we're not gonna be dividing by two or anything just the year one and the par value the par value of the coupon that's going to be 1000 or sell b4 for us the frequency that's going to be two comma and actual to actual like i said in this that that's the price the accrued interest okay now uh now for the dates i'm gonna be using a coupon next but the first uh, value that we're going to be having is the settlement date, date, of course, because this is when uh, we pay, right? So, uh, and then I use a negative value here, and that's going to be the quoted price. But since I'm going to be talking about the purchase of this bond, I mean, 
it it belongs to me i have to pay the quoted price and i also have to pay the previous owner the accrued interest and that's kind of like a settlement that's a that's a tacit settlement that we have uh, that that you have with the previous owner this is not like a must and in and and, and and this is not considered to uh, find the price of a bond, but this is what something that actually happens. You pay the accrued interest and the quoted price to the previous owner. That is, if you want to sell this bond between coupons, that's going to happen to you too. The new owner of the bond is going to pay you the accrued interest. Okay, I think that's all set, right? Now, uh, Cope, next coupon next or coupon coupon cd and the settlement well yeah the path value and the maturity and we're gonna be clicking on the maturity date and press f4 so we can lock it up the frequency two and the other one is one for the basis and notice that i didn't lock uh, the previous cell i mean the the settlement that's because i'm gonna drag it to the very end and uh, find the values. So observe that if I keep on dragging it down, I get an error because the coupon has already matured, right? So that that's something that that's pretty neat here. I think I find it very neat because um, sometimes you keep on you know typing when you're doing this by hand, you keep on typing stuff and maybe you got got it all wrong. So it's, it pays 58.75 to the very end, and in the end, it's going to pay you the face value and the coupon. So 1058.75. All right. Now, we're going to be finding the yield to maturity using the XIRR uh, function. So let's type. This is pretty straightforward. Just type XIRR. And the difference between this and IRR function is that this takes into account the dates. So the values first. You're going to be selecting the cash flow here, comma, and then we're going to be selecting the dates. All right, neat. So hit enter, and this is what we have. All right, uh, now we're going to be using the yield function, and this is kind of a tricky one, and I'd like to uh, stop for a moment uh, for this, but I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, uh, uh, committing uh, the first uh, the, the first uh, okay uh, this time I'm gonna be uh, making a mistake so you can see what the what, what what the problem is even though you think it's not gonna be a problem okay so let's just go ahead and follow the whole thing the whole the instructions of the formula so for the settlement we're gonna be clicking on the settlement date and then the maturity maturity the rate the annual rate the price well the price that's going to be the price here the coded price right the redemption the redemption value that's going to be 1000 of course the frequency it's two and the actual to actual basis here and then we have this crazy uh, value over here is going to get you this or either this or a negative number which uh, which is pretty uh, um, bad right um, okay so so let's go again from scratch all right so let's go from scratch once again okay let's erase this and let's uh, type yield now the settlement maturity the rate the price well, that's going to be your price here divided by 10 the face value divided by 10 and this is this is the only opportunity that you have to do this because uh when you have uh, everything in terms of 100 but that's okay i mean if the face value is 100 and let's say that the quoted price is 137.7 you don't have to divide that by 10 I hope that's uh, clear. Uh, yeah, and the rest is just the same. And this is what you get. Um, 6.49. All right. So let's see uh, 
this time I'm gonna be uh, let's, uh, make a copy and find the yield to maturity but this time we're gonna be using um, the the call price okay let's see where is this oh, where is this too uh, we're gonna be using this one too okay great okay so why this is important and, and I'm gonna show you why is this important okay so for the settlement here I have that that value and then we're gonna be using the same formula here coupon next uh, coup, um, I, coup, um, next here um, and then we're gonna talk about the settlement and the settlement that's gonna be the past date all right um, the maturity that's gonna be our first call date uh, we punch f4 so it's uh, set the frequency it's two and one for the issue and then we hit enter and I scroll down to the very end until it's there is no life and now here I have uh, I have a, 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 an error here and why is this error coming from because the maturity date or the first call date it's already been reached you see this is why it's pretty good huh all right um yeah for now for the same stuff here we got a call price and we have to pay for the accrued interest too all right and we have 58 we're gonna link that to the very end and in the end we're gonna get it we're gonna get 1058 dollars and 75 cents okay so now for the same let's just go ahead and remember x i r on the values here on the dates over there and then we punch enter and we have that now for the yield to maturity let's just uh type yield and then the settlement date um that's our settlement date the maturity at this time we're going to be using the first call date the rate it's always going to be the coupon rate the price well that's uh, the price divided by 10. the redemption up uh, the redemption up uh, that's 1000 divided by 10. the frequency it's two and actual to actual heat enter and there we have it yeah you have you always have a, a few different uh, few difference between them you know the way you find the yield to maturity from one or another and that's because uh, if we were using that settlement date as the issuing date we wouldn't have any difference but since we we're not and that's not typical you know to do that when you're valuing a bond or find the yield to maturity YTM to a bond so this uh, value should be different from this one and if you ask me which one's gonna be uh, more accurate i'd say that this one's gonna be more accurate than the yield to maturity because even though it it's pretty close uh the use for this one is more like uh for projects and stuff like that that are not uh so picky with the dates and times of a day that you sell a bond or something because this remember that is those are like trillions and billions of dollars and stuff like that so it is kind of picky with the dates and um, um, well uh, I'd use the, the yield uh, function instead of, uh, of the XIRR even though it takes into account it is a pretty close uh, call and it takes into account um, the dates at which uh, each of the payments are being made well well, guys, this is it for today. If you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.